Tonight, as the Israel-Hamas war continues to escalate, top U.S. agencies are sounding the alarm about hate here at home. As the FBI has noted, we are seeing an increase in reported threats against faith communities, particularly Jewish, Muslim, and Arab communities and institutions. A new report from the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security detailing that recent events have sharpened the focus of potential attacks on targeted individuals and institutions perceived as symbolic or tied to the conflict. Cities across the country now stepping up security efforts in the wake of these threats. California Governor Gavin Newsom authorizing $10 million in funding for increased police presence at places of worship, including synagogues and mosques. With daily demonstrations flooding the streets of New York, the NYPD deploying all officers in full uniform until further notice. Despite an increase in law enforcement, the fear of these threats becoming reality. In New York City, police releasing these photos of a man who they say punched a woman in the face at a subway station, allegedly telling her it was, quote, because she was Jewish. And in Cincinnati, the Jewish Community Relations Council says at least 10 anti-Semitic incidents were reported at schools in the city in just one week, including bullying of Jewish students and harassment. Since the massacre of Israeli civilians and others on October 7th, we've seen a 51 percent increase in anti-Semitic incidents around the country in comparison to the same time frame the previous year. It just shows that what happens in the Middle East manifests itself here in the United States and frankly around the world. Free, free Palestine. Meanwhile, in Pennsylvania, a man has been arrested after police say he approached a group of pro-Palestinian demonstrators, yelled racial slurs and pointed a gun at them. And in San Diego, police are investigating a possible hate crime at the Islamic Center after flyers and blue cloth were displayed near the mosque. We as, you know, Muslim Americans, we have the right, like every other people who belong to any faith congregation, we have the right to come and pray safely. Anti-Semitic and anti-Muslim hate speech have also been on the rise online. According to the Global Project Against Hate and Extremism, the social media platform 4chan, an unregulated messaging forum often used by hate groups and white supremacists, saw a 479% increase in the use of explicit anti-Semitic and anti-Muslim slurs since the war began. When you see spikes in violent, hateful rhetoric and any of the online platforms, but especially those fringe platforms that extremists often operate in, it's a huge red flag. The rise in verbal and physical threats coming after a six-year-old Palestinian American boy was stabbed to death in Illinois. Prosecutors say his landlord targeted him for being Muslim. You want war? It's overseas, it's not our war. It's not the United States war. We're gathering here to say, we need to save our kids. I'm not just saying about Palestinians. I'm saying about our, our kids. A devastated community torn apart by another hate-fueled attack. Stephen Romo joins us now from New York. Stephen, you mentioned in your report there this new report from the FBI. Does that report list any specific threats? Yeah, Ellison, that's the thing about this report. It doesn't mention any specific plots or anything like that. The warnings are much more general because the climate is so heated and there are many potential targets that are seen as connected to the conflict, whether they actually are or not. Things like mosques and synagogues. Interestingly, the report says the biggest threats come from lone actors, the so-called lone wolves that we talk about who may be inspired by this conflict. Ellison. All right, Stephen Romo in New York, thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.